Bacteria need to produce specific enzymes in order to meet its metabolic demand and also to reproduce. But in order to produce specific enzymes or proteins, bacteria need to produce the raw materials first, the amino acids. And among these amino acids, one of such amino acids is tryptophan. Now, the process by which bacteria produces tryptophan is known as tryptoperon. Now, what is tryptoperon? So, tryptoperon, first of all, it's an operon system. That means multiple genes are controlled by a single promoter. And all this product of the tryptoperon genes are the enzymes which converts the chorismic acid into tryptophan in a sequential step. So, using this tryptophan operon, bacteria is able to produce tryptophan which would be utilized during protein synthesis. Now, we would be talking about the transcriptional regulation of these tryptophan operon genes. Now, let's assume a situation when the tryptophan level is high. It has been seen at that situation the operon status is off. And whenever the tryptophan level is low, the operon status is on. That means the tryptophan uh, operon genes are transcribed and the all necessary enzymes to convert chorismic acid to tryptophan is produced. It makes sense because whenever there is plenty of tryptophan, bacteria won't waste its energy to produce more tryptophan. But it would produce more tryptophan when the tryptophan level is low and it needs tryptophan. So we can understand this operon is active in an on demand basis. And also, this operon is an repressible operon. By default state, the operon is on. Only the operon is off when there is plenty of tryptophan and there is no more demand of the tryptophan. Now, let's just look at what happens when the tryptophan level is low. Now, when the tryptophan level is low, then these genes which produce uh, chorismic acid which produce tryptophan from chorismic acid would be transcribed more. But how does that happen? So, like LAC operon, here also there is a repressor. The repressor is an aporepressor in absence of tryptophan. So, it cannot become a hollow repressor and cannot uh, suppress uh, the transcription of these genes. So, when tryptophan level is low, the repressor is inactive and it cannot suppress the transcription. As a result, transcription happens. But whenever the tryptophan level is high, it can bind to the uh, repressor and the repressor now becomes a hollow repressor. As a result, it binds to the operator region of the trip operon and RNA polymerase cannot bind to that now. And as a result, the trip operon genes are not transcribed. Now, if we zoom into details of this process, we can understand the promoter and the operator region has a sequence known as the leader sequence. So whenever RNA polymerase is transcribing this leader RNA, this leader RNA has two sp four specific sites which can pair with each other. One, one, two, three, four, these are the four sites and two, three can pair with each other. Also one and two and three and four can pair with each other. And they are known as anti-attenuator stem loop and attenuator stem loop uh, respectively. And this is the structure attenuator stem loop which results in pausing of the RNA polymerase and not allowing to produce the genes of the trip operon. Now we want to look at a situation when the tryptophan level is high. It has been seen when the tryptophan level is high a attenuator stem loop is formed. That means region 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are paired. In this situation, what happens is there is a small sequence highlighted here in blue which is rich in uracil. That means there is a greater chance that RNA polymerase would fall off from that region and not transcribe trip E to trip A these genes. Now, whenever tryptophan is low, it has been seen region 2 and 3 pairs and as a result, the downstream genes are transcribed. Let's just look into details what happens and why sometimes these uh, 
anti-attenuator stem loop is formed while sometimes attenuator stem loop is formed. Now whenever tryptophan is low, it has been seen that anti-attenuator stem loop is formed. Wherever, whenever tryptophan is high, attenuator stem loop is formed and the RNA polymerase falls off. Zooming into details, we found that whenever there is a high level of tryptophan, what happens? So the leader RNA is translated as well at the time of the transcription because in bacteria, transcription and translation happen simul simultaneously. Now imagine a situation when the tryptophan level is high. When the tryptophan level is high, the ribosome speed is pretty high and it could easily move forward quickly because all the amino acid need to synthesize proteins are in pretty much abundance. So as a result, region 2, 3 and 4 can pair together and this attenuator stem loop is formed. But imagine a situation when tryptophan is low. At that situation, there is a specific there is a specific site where uh, there is a specific site which codes for codon corresponding to tryptophan but you can understand the tryptophan level is low as a result the amino acyl trna which brings the tryptophan is also less in abundance and as a result the ribosome speed is also low which give rise to formation of the 2-3 anti-attenuator stem loop and as a result RNA polymerase can move forward and transcribe the downstream genes for trip operon and when the tryptophan is low this attenuation the repression of this attenuation makes sense because RNA polymerase can move forward make the genes uh, uh, transcribe the genes which can give rise to the proteins which are necessary for conversion of Corismic acid to tryptophan. So that was my video about trip operon. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't like to like, comment, and share. Thank you.